Hey everyone, Anne McLean here. I'm a NASA astronaut and I lived on the International Space Station for about six and a half months last year. And I know a lot of people find themselves in confinement right now or living in quarantine under conditions that uh, maybe are not the most favorable. So while we recognize that, uh, that the situation right now in the world is very different than what we have uh, up in space, I do think that there are some parallels uh, some lessons that we learned over the last 20 years living on space station that maybe can apply to your scenario. And I think the big thing that I realized was uh, that it's a big mental adjustment uh, when we are living and working in space. People think of space exploration as solely a, a technical feat, but, but really there's a huge non-technical aspect that is critical in our success. And that's pretty simply how well we can get along with others. If you have a crew that goes to space and a month into it are not speaking to each other, that's just not gonna be an effective team. So about uh, one of the astronauts that flew a few years before me, Peggy Whitson, uh, she worked with Dr. Al Hall and one of the psychologists at NASA and they developed what we call now expeditionary crew skills. And these are basically five main skills that they identified were important and critical to these successful teams. And those five skills are communication, leadership and followership, self-care, team care, and group living. So the first one, communication. That's basically how to express oneself so that you're clearly understood. It's also how to be an active listener and ask questions so that you know that you understand what's being said to you. And uh, it's actually amazing how many problems are generated just because of miscommunication. And so, we talk about these, this aspect and some of the behaviors that contribute to good communication. So things like active listening and asking, asking questions like I just said, using concise terminology, maybe waiting to speak until your emotions have subsided and you can speak more factually instead of emotionally. The next uh, skill is leadership and followership. And that's basically how the team hierarchy adapts to a changing situation. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I kind of talk about leadership and subordinate leadership because really everybody is a leader no matter what level that you're at. You know, even your kids can be leaders. And, um, and so, you know, the leader is the one that officially sets the goals of the team and perhaps leads by example, strengthens relationships and kind of has that responsibility. And the follower or the subordinate leader uh, sets their own goals and their behaviors uh, in order to support the vision of the leader. And so you can apply those roles uh, kind of in whatever group that you're in. Uh, maybe you don't have an appointed leader, but maybe you have somebody that's kind of more of a natural leader. And, you know, some of the skills, some of the behaviors uh, for this leadership followership uh, is that you can effectively occupy both leader and follower roles. So maybe someone is, uh, um, you know, a leader in one aspect uh, in one task that you're doing, and then very later on in that day, somebody else takes the leadership role. And so, you know, the ability to kind of suppress that ego and say, okay, I'm going to lead from the front on this one, and on this one, I'm going to defer to somebody that, uh, that may be the expert in that. The next skill that is important uh, for uh, expeditionary crew skills is self-care. And this is so important because if you don't take care of yourself, if you're not healthy, then you can't perform for the team. You can't be a good team member. And further, you may actually have to pull skills from the rest of your team or pull, pull resources from the rest of your team uh, for them to take care of you. So knowing when you need to stop and take care of yourself is very important. Uh, and so this is how healthy you are on a psychological and physical level. And you really have to pay attention to that. You know, sometimes when we get in these awkward situations, our first instincts aren't the right instincts. When we have stress in our normal lives, uh, maybe we can, um, you know, skip the gym one day, or maybe we go out and, um, you know, we just decide to watch TV and ignore life for a little bit. Well, we're all going to be in this current situation and in confinement in a little bit too long to just uh, kind of sit and, and watch TV or, or consume social media. So we're going to have to be active about how we self-care. And so this is, you know, trying to manage your own emotions. Some of the behaviors that can help you with this is try to be calm in the face of stress. Recognize that stress is uh, when expectations don't meet reality and we can't change the current reality. And so it's probably a good idea that we try to manage some of our expectations. Um, you wanna maintain your social relationships. Uh, don't cut yourself off, uh, you know, and, and if you start to get into a negative ha ha thought pattern, then, um, uh, you know, recognize that and try to get out of that. And sometimes it's just taking care of yourself physically. 
you know, take the time to go to the gym, eat right, uh, take time away from the group uh, for some, some sol solitude if you need to, read a book. And the next aspect is team care. And team care is how healthy the team is on a physical, psychological level. And this can be influenced a lot by external and internal stressors. So some of the good um, behaviors to help with team care is to demonstrate patience with others. We're all human, we're all going through this, we all have emotions. Uh, whether we're on the space station, or whether we're on the earth, we have good days, we have bad days, uh, we feel stress, we feel frustration, sometimes we feel anger. And recognizing that um, you know, we want, to be, we want to be able to forgive ourselves when we feel those, but we also want to forgive those around us. And so uh, let's just give each other a little bit of grace. Uh, you want to monitor your team for signs of fatigue and stress and catch it early. Uh, you know, maybe take some of their, their tasks or, uh, uh, and, and help them out with it. Say, hey, I'm going to go do this. Why don't you go read your book? Why don't you go on a run? Why don't you go do something? Uh, volunteering for the unpleasant tasks. There are certain tasks when we're a group living that nobody wants to do. And, uh, and sometimes it really just helps the psyche of the whole group if you uh, can volunteer for those. And that's the, ne the next one is group living. Uh, a lot of us find ourselves in a group living scenario. And that's basically how well we cooperate with each other in order to integrate into the team uh, in order to achieve a shared goal. And hopefully, um, based on what we talked about a minute ago, uh, we've set goals. For, even for this quarantine period, we can, uh, we can set goals that the, that the team is striving for, that each individual is striving for, and we can help each other reach those goals. Some other behaviors that can help with uh, group living is to act cooperatively instead of competitively, make use of available team resources, respect other team members' real roles and responsibilities and what they're faced with, what, what are their stressors. Uh, actively work to ensure a positive team attitude. Um, you know, sometimes if, you, if you're thinking negatively in your mind, that, uh, then uh, you know, be very deliberate that what comes out of your mouth is positive and, and that can actually you know, pull ourselves out of, in, out of the negativity. So that sums up the, the five main skills. And I think really what I wanted to emphasize to everybody is that it's a mental adjustment. It's a mental adjustment when we live in space and it's a mental adjustment to be living in, in whatever level of uh, quarantine or self isolation or social distancing that we're living in right now. And the big thing is it, it's okay to not be okay. Um, but it's what you choose to do about that that's important. You know. Make sure that you're not taking your stress and, and putting it on everybody else by lashing out or sharing what's stressing you. Maybe just give yourself a little grace and recognize that you're stressed and then really deliberately try to act for the better of the group. And that's your group that you happen to maybe be living with. And that's also our greater community. All of us right now are trying to behave in a way to help our greater community. And um, I think more than any time, right now on earth and what we definitely saw from space is that we're all in this together uh, and we need to be intentional. We can be successful in, uh, in confinement if we're intentional about our actions, if we take care of our teams and, uh, and we can do practical things to help our teams. One of the practical things that we can do is to set goals. And uh, you know, it might, might sound weird to set goals as a, as a small group, but each of us individually and as a group, uh, we work better when we're going toward goals. So, if we just mentally adjust to this new normal and say, okay, well, you know what? In the next three weeks, I didn't anticipate to want to do this, but this is what I want to do. And we share that with a group. And then as a group, we set our goals and then we can hold each other accountable during this time. Um, another way is to bring the outside in. Upon space station, holidays were one of my favorite things. And um, you know, certainly uh, holidays were not the same as what we had on the ground, but we made it work. We found decorations, uh, we set music, we took the time to bring the outside world into our space station. And so maybe be really creative about how you can bring the outside in. Maybe somebody in your group has a favorite restaurant um, or a favorite activity that they just can't do. Well, how can you recreate that for them in a, in a confined environment? I want everybody to really consider your effect on the group. You know, when you're able to, uh, like I said, bring the outside in for somebody else, you're really helping the group. You're making it so much better for everybody else. And likewise, if we get stressed, and we don't think about it and we don't give ourselves grace and we lash out, we can really affect the group morale. And I, I wanna leave you with something that Christina Cook uh, said recently. Christina Cook, for those that don't know, she just came back from spending 328 days on the space station and, uh, and is also lucky to, uh, lucky to have her as a friend of mine. And something she said really stuck with me. And she said that to get her through the days up on space station, she, would think about the things that someday she would miss. Yes, she missed Earth when she was up in space, but she knew that at some point she would be looking back at that time and 
wishing that she could have certain things back. So she tried to identify what those are and really enjoy those. And so, you know, we're often so busy in our lives and uh, whether we chose it or not, we've all had to pause a little bit right now. And But maybe there are aspects of this that we're gonna miss when it's over, um, you know, just from a family standpoint. You know, maybe it's spending extra time with our kids or um, getting to participate in our kids' education or spending more time with loved ones or finally cleaning out the garage, whatever it is. Um, so whatever that is, I hope that, uh, I hope that everybody can uh, stay ahead of the mental game, be very intentional on what you think about, um, set your goals, and uh, just like we do up on Space Station, uh, we can all be successful during this period of time. Good luck. Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.